I think if you lived all your life in Britain, you can very easily forget how well Britain has done out of the way the economy works, whether you measure it over the last 50 years or the last 200 years. Working with CWM as a family of churches all around the world, you're very aware that for many of them, they're working in contexts where the world economy has worked very badly for them. So the whole issue of economic questions, economic justice, is actually more prominent in their thinking as churches than it often is in a British context. But when you then start saying, well, what can we say to each other, we discover that many of the same issues that have produced the problems for them are behind some of the things that worry churches in Britain, particularly around how uh, economics can benefit on average, but leave some people way behind the average, and in fact increase inequality. And what NIFIA is really trying to do, I think, is add two dimensions that are often missing when we get anxious or even passionate about economic questions. One is an analysis of how the economy works sufficient that we don't come across to other people as simply naive or superficial and that we can understand enough of what we're analysing to address it in terms that those who spend all their lives analysing it will have to sit up and say, well, at least the churches know what they're talking about. But we're really joining in a lot, of other, a lot of other people who would say that the economy isn't simply about financial aspects and has become too dominated by perhaps narrowly financial objectives. What the NIFIA process is doing though is saying in addition to that we want to bring a particular Christian perspective to say that actually if the world is God's then the framework of our theology is the only right framework in which to do our economic analysis. And so we've been exploring in the NIFIA meetings what that actually looks like. So for example, if you start with the basis that every human being is made in the image of God and is infinitely precious, then you've got to have a system that gives every human being dignity. And that's one key element in addressing how economic problems are um, dealt with and how the consequences of economic processes are then addressed. But a second element that's equally important is our insight as Christians that actually we're all sinners. And so whatever structure you create, whatever models you develop, they're going to be inhabited by people who are flawed, who are subject to temptation, who sometimes fall into temptations. And so you've got to design structures that actually take that into account, not just ones that would be wonderful in theory. But I think the other big element of uh, NIFIA is we don't just want to analyse and complain and be anxious. We want to say here are some quite concrete, practical alternatives that have a track record of success. And so part of what we've been sharing is models where at some level, perhaps sometimes very small scale, uh, different models have in fact delivered better results or have, results, or have produced results in ways that uh, feel more human in their scale. Some of the challenge is how you then multiply that up from a small model with some like-minded people to a national scale or potentially a worldwide scale. But those are the sorts of areas we've been trying to explore. What alternative approaches are realistic given who people are, given how the economy works, but would produce a better outcome? Now, will anyone actually listen to us? Well, at one level, I'm not sure that's the main question. Uh, we're called to be faithful and we let God, through the Holy Spirit, use us in whatever way God wants. But we've also been hearing some stories uh, where we have had an impact. Some of the countries where CWM operates, the church actually has a very significant voice in public affairs. Not everywhere, but sometimes. And there are ways we can use that. And so we've been thinking about how do we actually advocate most effectively? Not to other Christians or other people who are used to listening to sermons, but people who come from a quite different place and start with a set of numbers in their heads as the beginning of the debate. Well, how do we take that worldview and use it to express some of the concerns we've been working on? So what is advocacy? Giving voice to the voiceless. So we think there are ways that we can advocate better. And part of the CWM ethos is we try and do that together. So we've also been thinking about particular questions where people with a European perspective and people with a Caribbean perspective might together be more influential than either of us trying to make a difference on our own. So I think those are some of the areas. It's a very big question. We don't pretend that we've addressed it all, but we hope we are equipping representatives of a number of member churches to go back into their own church context and say, well, how do those churches not just have a discussion internally, but make that discussion have an impact outside the church?